All right, Boz, here we go. I think uh, I think this is going to be fun and hopefully informative for people. Well, I, I like both of those things, Pat, so I hope so too. So for everybody watching or listening, here's the general format. This is based upon something I did for a while uh, a while ago for my gym, and people really liked it. And I the goal was to basically... I don't think people give themselves enough credit. That's the general encapsulation. And I tried to illustrate that by pulling a bunch of data from BTWB on very common or popular benchmarks and lifts and just telling people what was the median, what was the middle of the road, 50%, right down the middle. And I think a lot <laughs> of people were shocked. They're like, oh, I'm actually doing pretty good. So we're going to take a walk through some data. Sounds good. And I think just a couple little housekeeping items beforehand. What I'm going to give is the 50th percentile. And I know that we've explained this a couple of times, but maybe this is somebody's first time listening to the podcast. So the 50, all like, you know, if there's, let's just say a one rep max deadlift is loaded on BTWB and just thousands and thousands and thousands of people list what that is. It's going to correlate, you know, or correlate whatever the right word is, you know, get all that data together and then say, this is the top of the top. This is kind of near the bottom. This is right in the middle, 50th percentile. So that's what we're going to be talking about, what's right in the middle. But I think what's important for people to realize is right in the middle, quote unquote, average. People don't like to hear that they're average, but this is not a normal average. It would be like if you had an average, it depends upon who you're sitting around, right? So the people on BTWB and posted this data take their fitness really seriously. They're not your normal folks walking around. It would be like if you checked out your net worth compared to the people who are in the same room with you, but it was Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. It might give you a skewed, a skewed you know, number <laughs> as to what your net worth really, how it's stacked up against the average, right? So we're in a yeah. we're in a significantly fit group of a cohort of people here. So that's what I want to get across. Yeah, yeah. Said, said another way, we're comparing numbers across people that actually care enough to log their numbers right. and are engaged in fitness regularly. So that's already going to skew things up. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be a comparison across just the general swath of population, which would skew things way further down than they would be here. So keep that in mind as we, uh, as we talk it through. The, and if you find yourself below what's the 50th percentile, don't worry you know, fitness is a journey, you're on the path, you're paying attention to how you move and how you eat, you're, you're good to go. It's a long term process. So and what's, and what's the phrase you're, you're lapping everybody on the couch? Without True a doubt. story. Common questions that popped up last time that I'll try to address now is, uh, you know, for example, I gave a, a time on, let's just say Fran, and then people wanted to know last time I did this. All right, that average that you gave for Fran, does that apply to me because I'm 54? Is that a master's level time? Is that everybody that's ever posted? And so the answer is for these medians, these 50th percentiles, it includes anyone of any age that has posted the workout as prescribed. So that answers Got that it. question. And then the next part is if you want to get a bit more um, nuanced data from 35 and below, or you know, or I should say 34 and below, or 35 and up will be considered a master. You can find a workout, go into the BTWB app, and then let's say you looked up Fran. And then you're looking on your phone, on the app at Fran. Under the workout, there's going to be this little slider that you can tap the screen with your finger and slide it left and right. And that is a, uh, a level slider is what that's called. So there's a difference between mm. percentiles and level. If you slide that level slider to the left and to the right, it will scroll through times and tell you what level that is. And you can also um, either tap all age ranges or masters if you want to get a kind of a better sense of that. So what we're going to be talking about is percentile, and it includes everyone of any age who's ever logged it as prescribed. So I think that's all my housekeeping right there. Um, Oh, and one final thing, huge shout out to Jake M at BTWB, one of the masterminds behind the scenes. He was very kind with his time this morning as I frantically called him as I tried to get all this data together for this, <laughs> for this podcast, and he was uh, mission critical. So 
So I know the time. Yeah, right I'm on. looking at them. Boz does not know what I'm going to say. So Boz oh, is more of the, uh, the, you know, the crowd reacting to just thoughts in general. Are they high? Are they lower than where you thought? But we'll start with your friend and mine, Fran. Thrusters and pull-ups. Fran. This, thrusters and pull-ups. Okay. 50 so percentile. let me get this straight. The game is that I'm trying to guess what the 50th percentile is for Fran. Yep, all yep. age groups represented, all data yep. taken and, into consideration. And there's okay. a male time and a female time, and we'll, and we'll go back and forth on that. But for the Fran, go ahead and guess, and they're generally close, but go ahead and guess the, the men's time. Okay, I'm gonna say for the 50th percentile Fran, I bet you it is close to seven minutes. I'm gonna say a little bit below that. I'm gonna go with 6.30 for a man to meet the 50th percentile doing Fran with 95 pound thrusters and pull-ups. For the men, five minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, so I was a little generous, okay. And for women, it's 6.30. Oh, I was, I was closer for the women, interesting. Closer for the women. And you know what's funny is, for a, a median Fran, like an average Fran, so to speak, is 535 for the gentleman. I think that's a pretty darn good Fran, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's aggressive. And I bet you that uh, for some of these benchmarks like that, you get a lot. Of, first of all, it's a fast workout. And a lot of people that are mm -hmm. going to want to log that are going to be showcasing how fast that they're doing it. So <laughs> yeah. it might be a little skewing there, too. Um, not to try to cover my tracks for being incorrect on my guess, but <laughs> but that does seem um, stout for a 50th percentile. But that's great. I mean, that's that's cool to reflect the just how fast and how fit people are with with that particular workout. Another one, an absolute beauty as far as I'm concerned, Helen. So we've got 400 meter runs, Ooh, Helen, Kellen, uh, kettlebell swings and pull ups. Uh, what's your guess for 50th percentile women? 50th percentile women on Helen. Let me think about that. So I would say, and I'm going to try to talk through my process a little bit here. Um, I know that a sub 10 Helen is pretty good. You got to be moving on those 400s to do that. So I would say if you're still having, you know, a, a situation where you're breaking up those pull-ups and you're breaking up the swings, which I believe a 50th percentile athlete would be doing, um, you're going to add another 20 seconds each round. So that's another minute, maybe two minutes for each movement. So I bet you it's between, I bet I'm going to say 13 minutes is a 50th percentile, Helen. Not a bad guess. 11.49. So just about 12 minutes. 11.49. Okay. Good, really good guess. And for the gentleman, 10 minutes, 32 seconds. That's the 50th. That's the 50th. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's that's rough. <laughs> so, you know, what's funny about a lot of these 50th percentile times is is what I think it illuminated in a lot of people's minds, which is why I did this a while ago, is everyone just sees their favorite games athletes snatching the world, clean jerking the world. And I think they look at these loads and think, ah, that's kind of what everyone's doing these days. I'm not strong enough. But I think they see when we'll get to them eventually the average load is and they're like, oh, I'm actually mm. doing better with the barbell than I thought. And they hear the time on some of these mixed modality Metcons and they're like, oh, wow, that's a really good friend. That's a really good Helen yeah, fill in the blank. to be so, done. Yeah, yeah, I think it was kind of, it was an interesting deal. Okay. Well, that Move. alludes back to, uh, you know, conversations we've had in the past too with, you know, nobody's favorite thing is to go to the track and run 400 meter repeats. That's, right. that's a really hard day uh, of effort. But as far as utility and as far as developing your overall fitness, that's what most people need more of, not more time on the platform. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agreed. And, and the data kind of uh, leads to that. Another gorgeous one, not a barbell in sight, Cindy, 20 minute AMRAP, pull-ups, push-ups, air squats, uh, average 50th percentile, I should say, for a gentleman, how many rounds? You know, I just did a 10 round Cindy four time the other day, just a quick straight blast. And that was a lot of fun. Um, but 50th percentile, let me think about that. If you're, I mean, I'm holding a round a minute is pretty darn hard to do as things progress in that workout because of the push ups, particularly. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, if you're not really pushing the squats, the time on those can add up quite a bit as well. So I, it's, it's got to be below 20 for sure, but it's got to be above 10. 10 is, is uh, around every two minutes. I think that's pretty manageable for the 50th percentile. So I'm going to say it's, ooh, the question is, is it north of 15 or south of 15? I'm going to say it's slightly south of 15 rounds at 14 rounds. 14.2 for the women. So the other, you're, you're right there for the women for the Boom. So then it's men. probably, hold on, don't answer, don't answer. I bet you it's 16 or 17 then for the 17, men. 17 for okay. the men. <laughs> <laughs> and both of those, you know, 14.2 for women, 17 for men, those are legit Cindy scores. Yep. I mean, and again, sure. that's 50th percentile. There's some fit people out there, you know, and that's why, that's why if you find yourself, quote unquote, average on the data posted on btwb i'm here to tell you you're a very fit human yeah, you're being doing great oh here we go now we're gonna stretch it out boz murph now mm. the oh. only thing i can't tell you with this data is how many were posted with or without a vest and that's certainly going to skew it because you know murph is written as if you have a vest wear it not mm -hmm. that you need to wear a vest if you have one wear it so people post a prescribed Murph with and without a vest. So all that's kind of in there. So what sorry. about partition versus un unpartition? Is that part of the data or is that unknown? Unknown. It's just, unknown. It's, it's Ooh, just that's a, a huge variable. <laughs> Ooh. Yep. But, but man, I think, okay. So I think most people partition it. I think most. Absolutely. Do. Yeah. Most sane people do because it's, <laughs> it's just a bruiser if you don't. But um, okay. So we're going in a little bit blind. We don't know if it's vested or not. We don't know if it's partitioned or not. It's a lot of work. I mean, we're talking two mile run, second mile coming when you're at your most fatigued. Um, you know, 100, 200, 300 on the reps. It's just a time sink at the best of times. I bet you, oh boy. Give me your men's pick. Men's pick, I'm gonna say south of 50 minutes. Women's pick is going to be a little north of 50, I think. I'll say 47 for the men, and how about 53 for the women? This is potentially some of your best work ever. Uh, <laughs> okay. Men, 47.55. Yes. Women, 51.07. Wow, not bad. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Pretty close. The women are cooking on Murph. I mean, my goodness. Um, you know, I, I might be, you know, since you've done all your workouts, you know, uh, you know, you've got your data in your head. It's probably a little unfair for me to give you the throw you the women's stuff because you want. I'll ask you the men's stuff, then I'll tell you what the women's is. Probably you can probably feel the better guess that way. Okay. D DT, 50th percentile. Uh, this is gonna be skewed by my own <laughs> hatred of this workout. I <laughs> so so for anyone who's unfamiliar with it, it's a heavy barbell, 155 for the men, 105 for the women, and we got deads, hang power cleans, and we're going overhead with it. Gosh, uh, you know, I have to admit on this one that uh it's been so long since I've done DT. This is a total weakness workout for me. I avoid it like the plague. I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, I don't even know what a good DT time is these days because I just don't Fair pay enough. attention to that particular Fair workout. Enough. So this one for me is really going to be a stab in the dark. But that being said, um, how many rounds is it again? Five. Five rounds. Okay, so five rounds. Twelve deads, nine hang power, yep. six overhead. Yeah, so let me think about that. Man, two minutes a round gets you 10 minutes. I bet you for a 50th percentile, it's going to hover around 10 minutes. Not a men. bad, not a bad guess. 1130. Okay. Yep. yep. Not a bad guess at all. Uh, and I bet you the women are not too far off. I bet they might even be faster because of the loading being a little bit lighter. Um, and some of the women that can just handle that are going to skew things pretty fast. Adrian Bosman, you know your crow fit. Uh, the women are <laughs> faster on this one. Uh, so the men were at okay. eleven thirty. The women are ten twenty four, just over a minute faster. Dang, crushing wow. it! Okay. Abs absolutely crushing it. Okay, man, Let's, I hate that workout. I <laughs> it's not it. not favorable despise to this <laughs> to my to my bird bones. <laughs> It doesn't and, work. and we're definitely unusual there. People love DT. They love sure it. Sure do. 
Uh, let's stick with workouts that people love and and the barbell. Let's go with Grace. 30 okay. clean and jerks for time, 135 or 95. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, 50th percentile for men. This one's a bit of a wild card because there's plenty of people that can come in and smash Grace Those and darn aren't necessarily. Dan Bailey types. Exactly. They're not going to necessarily be well-rounded, but they're going to smash Grace and they're going to want to post about it. And so I think that this one is going to skew lower than you might imagine. That's my hunch. And I know like a 90-second Grace is, is like good. A lot of people can do that these days, sub two for sure. Um, so I'm going to say for a 50th percentile, it's going to be between three and a half and four minutes and, and probably pretty close between men and women. Men, three minutes, 31 seconds. Boom. <laughs> I'm getting warm now. I'm getting warm. <laughs> women, three minutes, 57 seconds. Wow. So they were Dang. also between three and a half and four. Yeah. And again, so impressive. It's again, if you if you just took a hundred and if you don't if you're hard on yourself about grace, maybe you've got a five minute grace, like, oh man, I'm go ahead. This is what you should do. Get a waiver. You're going to need a waiver. Take a 135 pound barbell, <laughs> go down to your local Walmart or Target, set up in the parking lot, and just have any passerby just stop and do 30 Ugh. ground to overhead as quick as they can. And you'll see nobody can even do it. Like you're so skewed by what yeah. CrossFitters can do and what's average. You're doing amazing. So hopefully that's a where people are walking I'll, away I'll tell you this. a story about that too. You know, in the early days of um, San Francisco CrossFit, way back in the day, 2006, 2007, um, you know, it was a question as to whether or not we could complete Isabel, which is 30 oh, snatches yes. at 135. That was the big question was like, I don't know that we can do it in a single session because nobody at that point snatched. They certainly weren't going to be snatching for reps. They certainly weren't going to be snatching touch and go for reps. Um, and just was unheard of. And so at that point, it really was one of those situations where it wasn't just how fast can I do this? It's, is this possible at this time? And it turns out, of course it was, mm -hmm. but you didn't know. It wasn't this foregone conclusion that, oh yeah, everybody can just pick up a bar and snatch 135. Oh. And to your point, I think to the outside world, that is still very much the reality. So don't let yourself being steeped in this subculture uh, let you forget that that's plenty hard for most people. 99% of people on earth are going to struggle mightily with uh, the things that you take for granted. So don't, don't lose sight of that. Isabel was the workout that when I first, you know, started doing CrossFit back in 05 and we started ticking off benchmarks and I didn't even care what my yep. time was. It's just, what could I do prescribed? I don't care if it took me all morning. Did I do it? And, <laughs> and Isabel was like the last one of it's like, even if you gave me all morning, it, it's not happening. Yeah. Like it just seemed like science fiction for the longest time. It's yeah. People don't give it the credit or their, your perspective is now a bit skewed, but okay. Yes. All right. Absolutely. Let's, let's move some loading here. One rep max back squat. Ooh, this is going to be hard. Oh boy. 50th okay. percentile for the gentleman. 50th percentile. Well, let's start at the high watermark. I bet you if you're squatting four bills, you're in the 90th percentile, probably even higher. I bet it's not as high as people think at the, the high, high end. So 50th percentile, I would bet it's probably around 250 for the gentleman. Not a bad guess. 291. Oh, that's higher than I thought. Okay. It's a good spot. Do, do, you, do you happen to have what the 90th percentile is? Did you? Uh... I do not. I do not. But uh, okay. I can also tell people Curious. How, to, how to find that. Um, yeah. You can either you know, search in the app or if you're in the desktop version, your laptop, on one of the top menus, there's a button. Uh, you can click on explore, click on explore, click on workouts, and then you can find the workout that way. But no, yeah, a median 50th percentile, 291 mm. pounds. Yeah, wow. People love them squats, Boz. Sure do. <laughs> and for good reason, they should. Yeah. <laughs> Women, 175 <laughs> I, pounds. Okay. Yeah, that that feels about right. It feels about right, but it's also, isn't that amazingly impressive? Like if you, you think about, again, the climate that I grew up working out in where you know the guys were in there lifting yeah. weights largely and, and largely the women didn't have barbells in their hands they weren't deadlifting and power cleaning and back squatting it just wasn't occurring you know when i was lifting you know working out in the 90s at, at gold's gym with my high school buddies mm -hmm. 
And now, you know, CrossFit has helped put barbells in the hands of, of people, both men and women. And I love the fact that the median 50th percentile back squat for a woman is 175 pounds. I think that is that is legit all day long. Absolutely. And to your point, to expand on it a little bit, I mean, I can remember working out at commercial gyms, you know, in the early 2000s or whatever. And it was rare that you would find anybody squatting one plate on either side <laughs> right. with good technique. I mean, <laughs> right. we're talking like all the way down and all the way up. Right. The number of people that would do that was minuscule at best. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certainly gym rats that could do it and uh, could do much more. You know, there's some legit bodybuilders out there, but they were the extreme outliers. The average Absolutely. person wasn't getting that range of motion, certainly not with any sort of appreciable weight. So not yeah, the, the, the amount of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just how well permeated, yeah, that, that, that has become is impressive. Let's stick with the heavy lifts. Your friend and mine, the one rep max deadlift. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm going to be terrible at this one again. <laughs> Skewed by my own bias, my most hated of all lifts. Not because it's a, a bad lift. I think it's a great lift. I'm just bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so. another one just beloved by all. Yep. Oh, man. Just not me. Um, geez, man. The high end for that is going to be up there. Are we talking men or women here? 50th percentile for the men. 50th percentile for the gentleman on the deadlift. Whew. It's going to be high. I mean, if the squat's 290, it's going to be much higher than that. So I'm, I'm going to guess it's around 350. Great guess. It's 360. Great okay. guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. And women, 220.5. Awesome. You get the yeah. 0.5 in there. People are pulling some deads. Those are great deadlifts. Yeah. I mean, for a median deadlift, if you're like, for general health and fitness and walking around doing what you got to do, and if you can pull 360 off the ground for one, you're going to be okay in the grocery store. You're going to be just fine. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, one rep max clean and jerk. Now we're going to add a little, little technique hmm. in there, a little explosive hip opening. Hmm. Okay. Again, for the gentleman talking high end, I bet you it's pretty close to the back squat. Maybe a little bit. It's going to skew a little lower than that. I would say... Now, much lower. I would say from 50th percentile clean and jerk, it's going to be below three for sure. It's going to be above two for sure. Question is, is it below 250? I think it is. I bet you it's around 240 for the you're men. You're, you're good. It's between two and 250, but it's, the, it's a little bit lower. It's 205. 205. Wow. Okay. Lower than I would have thought. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. And so that was, you know, it's that one is also most likely, of course, we've got no idea, but based upon some of the other data there, it's there's probably a lot of contractile potential there, but it's just polishing the technique might get mm. a little bit more weight on that bar because 205, I think, is uh, that number caught me a little bit off guard as well. Yeah, women, that seems low. And one, well, yeah, go ahead with the women 121.3 pounds. Okay. Yeah, that feels a little low as well. Interesting. And you know, what I'll say, coming off the heels of the deadlift too, the deadlift being so high uh, for the 50th percentile, I think the deadlift, I've always felt this way about that lift, is that it is really an outlier in the sense that you can have somebody with a particular spinal integrity, a particular grit that has just this astronomical deadlift that doesn't necessarily reflect some of their other abilities with a barbell. Mm -hmm. I've seen that many, many times. Uh, and certainly more times than you see the inverse where you're like, oh man, the guy just has a freaky back squat, but all his other lifts are kind of lackluster. You almost never see that. But it is, I won't say common, but it does happen more regularly than you might think where you have somebody that just, I mean, they're skinny as a bean pole, but for whatever reason, the deadlift just lines up for them and they can pull the house, but all their other lifts don't really match up. And so I think that is uh, what you're starting oh. to see with the clean and jerk is where, okay, there's some other elements that dampen it and keep it in check. And also there are some folks like me around there, you know, where I, I don't know what kind of day I'm going to have when I try to get my arms over my head. Like I'm, I'm not going to help yeah. these clean and jerk numbers like, in any way, shape or form. But but terrible <laughs> shoulders don't affect me in any way, shape, or form with a deadlift. So I can you know, I put up a good yep. number there, terrible number in the clean and jerk. And so, you know, 
and if you are a bit banged up too, you need you need better joints and range of motion to put up a big squat number. But the deadlift, mm-hmm. all things considered, is relatively forgiving. Like a lot of people can get into a deadlift position and pull, you know, and so yeah. you get a lot of good data there. Okay, who here we go. We're getting fancy. One rep max snatch, gentlemen. Ooh, 50th, I think 50th that- percentile. The technique is going to dampen this top end significantly. Um, I think the pool of people doing it is going to be less for that reason. Uh, for all of the uh, opposite reasons that you just talked about with the deadlift. Hmm. So I would say top end, like I think a 90th percentile snatch is probably two and a quarter for the gentleman, maybe a little higher than that. So a 50th percentile, if we go down from there, I bet you it's above 135, but below 175. I'm going to say 145. I was going to say 150, but that's too high. 145, 50th percentile men snatch. It's a great guess. 154.3. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think that's pretty darn good, to be honest with you. Yeah. Again, I know everything gets so skewed by these pesky games athletes. Like, I know that that doesn't, you know... <laughs> You know, no one's getting a thousand likes on social media for that, but but exact, but general physical preparedness, you're in, in the real life doing whatever it happens to be. And when you wander in your garage, you can just explosively get 155 pounds elevated into the air, wedge your body underneath it, catch it beautifully and stand it up. That's pretty darn good. I mean, you're yeah, you're a unique absolutely. human being. Yeah, uh, and, and I think one thing too, you know, as we say this, because it does sound like, you, you know, after so many of them, you're kind of beating the the drum of, hey, it's it's awesome, everybody can do this. Yes, it is. Uh, I think it's also important to remember that, um, you, oh, I'm losing my train of thought now, geez. It's, it, it, <laughs> how terrible is that? Hey, it's very important to remember, and then I can't remember. Um, geez, well, what was I going to say? The, uh, we circle I'm back. I'm scrambling if here. It, if, it, if it pops in the old, uh, in the old head. Yeah, well, that's awful, but I'll tell you. there you have it. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's just assume that it was something fantastic. Yeah, women's, definitely it was going to be profound. Women's uh, number for the one rep max snatch is 88.2 pounds, mm. 50th percentile. Oh, I remembered what I was going to say. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not just the fact that you can do it. It's that if you can do it and you stick with it, you can sustain it for a long time. Most of these things, especially because you're not specializing in them, you know, we're not talking about developing an 800 pound deadlift, which is going to go away very rapidly as soon as you stop training specifically for that thing. You know, because we're not chasing those kind of high end numbers, you know, a 155 pound snatch might be modest on the world stage, but it is likely that somebody who's engaged in regular training will be able to maintain Mm -hmm. roughly that weight for as long as they want to or close to it. And that is the real ticket, in my opinion. You know, it doesn't have to be incredible uh, when you're t- looking at it in absolute terms. But man, if you can snatch that at age 35, and then you're still snatching around that weight at age 55, yeah, that's a humongous win. And I think that is taken for granted by a lot of people uh, in most cases. Amen to that. Well, believe it or not, you know, I could list every work on the world would be here for for five hours. That's we're done with the barbells. Okay. Now we're going to get into the stuff nobody wants to do, and I can't wait. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> Jerry. Do you remember the hero workout, Jerry, off the top of your head? Uh, is that the running forwards and backwards? Jerry is. No, oh, it's the row, run, row, right? Opposite. It's one mile run. Got it. 2K row, yep. one mile run. That's a good one. Oh. That is a good one. It's a beauty to make sure that you've been putting in the work. So one mile That's run, two K row, <laughs> one mile run. What do you oh, think, man. gentlemen? Fiftieth percentile. Uh, let's see here. I would average. Let's say we got an eight minute mile up front. Let's say a nine minute mile on the back. So that's seventeen minutes right there. A two K is going to be another eight minutes. Hmm. I bet you it's 26, 25 minutes, somewhere around there. You said 25, which is, it's tw- it's 24, 42. 
Okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> Not and bad. I, and I'm here to tell you, I've done, I've done, I do Jerry probably twice a year. And if you're in the 24, 42, that middle of the road, you, you got to earn it. Don't think that's just going to fall out of a tree and land in your lap. It's going to be. No, absolutely. That's going to yeah, be. That's, you got to stay on it. I it's, like that. I haven't done that workout in years. And uh, I'm going to add that one back in the rotation. That'll be good games prep for me when I'm on site running around. <laughs> well, I was going to say also good mental prep. I know you, you don't enjoy the old mile runs. Do not. Uh, women's time in that 28 minutes, you know. Nice. Spending a little bit more time on, on the rower probably, but a, a solid, solid time. Okay. Yep. Sticking with our non-barbell stuff. Here we go. 50th percentile, 800 meter dash. <sighs> Boy. Okay. Let's start on the high end. What's a good 800? I mean, a sub 230 is cooking on an, on an 800. And right now there's a good mm. number of people in the audience who've been following along and they go, I don't know what my 800 meter run is. <laughs> this is a great learning opportunity for those of you in that position. If you don't know, it's a great day to find out. It's a great day to find <laughs> you should, out. Yeah. You should go. It won't take long. Make sure you're getting warmed up and just hit it. Uh, you can thank us later. Jeez, let me think. 2.30 is cooking. Sub 2.30 is cooking. I... I bet you it is closer to 3.30 for the men than it is 3. So I'm going to say 3. I'll, I'll stick with 3.30. I'll go 3.30. Not a bad guess. 3.12. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a little faster than I thought. That's good. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think that will be a little bit faster than most people find. It's a, mm. it's a, good, it's a good little trot. It's yeah. a good, you know, you're on pace for a, just under a 6.30 mile at that pace. That's, a, yep. that's not bad. Women is three minutes and 54 seconds. And now we're going to stretch it out a bit. Men, 5K run. Mm, 50th percentile, huh? Yep. I mean, sub 20 is pretty good. 18 is like really hooking. I would say it's going to be between 22 and 24 minutes, I would guess. Uh, let's split the difference. Let's go 23 15. 24 29. Okay, I should have gone with my original instinct there. Yeah, and that's pretty good. You know, 3.2 miles, you know, that's, I can't quite do the math, but you're holding a little bit over an, an eight-minute mile, I guess, or right, right around an eight-minute mile because you get the point two in there for three continuous miles. Not too bad. Women, 28 minutes, 32 seconds. Um, let's see. And now we'll move on. Well, oh, I do have this one here. N nobody's going to know this, but we'll throw it out just just for funsies. Then we'll okay. move on to the rower. 10K run. 10K run. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 10K. That's just, that's just rude. Oh. Well, I mean, let's say this. If we take the average that was, what, 24, 24 minutes and double it, I mean, that gives us a 48 starting point. Add mm -hmm. a little bit for fatigue. I bet you it's going to hover around... 51 minutes for the men. It's exactly 51 minutes, Adrian. Boom. There it is. <laughs> Not bad. Women, 58 minutes. And now okay. we move on to the row. 500 meter Oof. row. Average. Average 50, per 50 percentile, percentile men. Mm. Um, I bet it's a little, it's, it's going to be cruisy. This is going to be an uncomfortable effort, even... Uh, if you're a good rower, it's going to be not an all out, obviously, but it'll be uncomfortable. I bet it's like 140. Not bad. 136. Oh, that's way faster than I would have thought. Wow. Okay. Oh, I'm here to tell Those you. seconds count. If, that, if that's yeah. the average, I, I, might, I might be able to do that, but they would take me to the hospital yeah. afterwards and my heart would explode. <laughs> I mean, that is, <laughs> some people are putting out some fast times on that row. If that's the 50th yeah. percentile. Uh, I also bet you that it drops off the average. If you take a look at the, the kind of classic rowing distances of 500,000, 2K, 5K, and I bet you it skews fast on the shorter distances, and then that levels out just due to selection of people opting out of those longer tests well, <laughs> and not wanting to be part of it. Well, or I take that back. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's the people that really love those that are the ones that report most and therefore would 
continue to skew that a little low. I, I don't know. That's well, I was going to say, we're about to find out because I have those rows. Those are the last things we're going to chat about. But women for okay. the 500 is a minute 56. Okay. Let's move to the 1,000 meter row. What a disgusting <sighs> effort, 1,000 meter row. Men, 50th percentile. I don't know what I like worse, the uh, the 1K or the 2K. It's kind of a toss up. It's a, it's a coin toss. That 1K is just long enough that you can... You know, you can really put the hurt on yourself, mm -hmm. um, but you convince yourself that it's not so far away that you might oh. as well step on it. it like, you, you know, it's you feel nasty. like you got it. It's nasty. And then that back, that back 250. It's just, like the 800 meter run. Yes, correct. Um, okay. One K row for the men, three, uh, 50th percentile. Let's see. Ah, man, a 315 is, is cooking. I mean, there's some freaks out there that are sub three. And that's, I, I remember uh, 2020, that was uh, one of the COVID games events. And I think there were a few guys that were in the 240s at oh. that point, which is, which is just crazy. So that's the high end. So I'm going to say a 50th percentile is hovering around a 330. 336. All right. Okay. Very well done. You know, which is, I'm doing the math right now, I'm a little calculator. Which is so quick. I mean, so that's holding, I think that's holding a minute 48 per 500. Yep. Oh, I and mean, that's, you're cooking. Women, four minutes, 14 seconds. Fantastic. All right, we've got, we've got three left. The 2K row, the 5K row, oh. and then max strict pull-ups and then we'll be done do i get uh do i get a prize at the end for uh you know how many i got close I think to the you target you do, is well, <laughs> well we'll let the audience decide that okay 2k oh, my row. dog is uh he's making an appearance here he's helping me with the 2k uh what, 2K what's, what's the what's the dog's name the tuxedo there you go of course it is yes old tux um all right so let me think here 2K row, we just said that it was 336 for a 1K. So let's use the same approach that we used for the uh, the running with the 10K. So 336 doubled is, what is that, 712? 712. Plus a little bit. Ooh, man, I mean, that's fast for a 2K. Jeez, anything approaching seven minutes is brutal for a 2K. Um, I bet you it's around 740. Not a Maybe, bad guess. Actually, Not a bad guess. Yeah, 733. Okay. All right. Which, by the way, is a great 2K. Yeah. I mean, you're putting yourself in the hurt locker for that. That's that's a good <laughs> 2K. Women, 8 minutes, 47 seconds is 50th percentile on that. Mm. All right. Two more. Two more metrics. Uh, 5K row. 50th oh, percentile. I don't like this one at all. For a few reasons. Number one, it's a disgusting distance. Number two, I've got a 6K row that I have to row as part of a monthly challenge with a bunch of people this month, and I've been procrastinating, and so I've got to do that. I'm, I was actually supposed to do it this morning, but I got tied up. So I think that's looming in the horizon, mm -hmm. on the horizon for me. Well, this will give um, you a good metric. <laughs> All right. Well, if it was a 20-minute a effort, would be holding a 4-minute 1K, which is doable... I, you know, the best are going to be significantly faster than that by a couple minutes. Yeah, man, I bet you it's around 20 minutes. I bet you it's between 20 and 21 minutes. I'm going to say 20 minutes and 15 seconds. It's 20 minutes. Oh, right on the nose. Okay. Right on the nose. And that's a really good row, especially again, I know this is, you might get some specialists and some wheelhouse people on here, logging sure. scores. You're throwing out a 20 minute 5k on the rower. You haven't been neglecting your rowing. I mean, that's oh, absolutely. That's and a I mean, solid you take that effort. into that's one of those things that I think is a good litmus too, because rowing isn't so foreign to a lot of people, even if they haven't done you know CrossFit. Mm -hmm. They they they're going to see rowing a lot of the times in commercial gyms. You know, they they kind of exist out in the wild. And if you just take your average gym goer and say, hey, we're just going to hop on this thing and go. It's going to be five k. Let's see what you can pull. I'd be surprised if most people don't fall apart oh, before yeah. that 20 yep. minute mark on the 5k effort. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a tough distance. Yeah, I agree. Uh, women, 23 minutes and eight seconds. Final metric, strict pull-ups, okay. unbroken, strict pull-ups. Strict, strict, unbroken. Okay. 
Man, I think we talked about this in the previous episode where we were de- uh, debating our theoretical choice of best athlete to have on your apocalypse yes, team. Yes, we did. Yes. Uh, between a, it was 30 strict pull ups, uh, super heavy snatch, and then a real fast 2K. But I couldn't I think, remember the numbers that we threw around until I looked at the data again today. So it's not like I had it in the back of my head. So, well, I don't remember the numbers either. I just remember that the the pull ups. I think I estimated high mm. during that episode, uh, as far as like what was the ninetieth percentile. And I think, if memory serves, it was around seventeen pull ups. And so I bet you the fiftieth for strict for men is going to be right around ten. Not bad. 13 pull-ups. 13? Okay, higher than I thought. That's good. Which, that's a good set of stricties, by the way. Yeah, it's no joke. Yep, Uh, for sure. That's another one that, that is quote-unquote the median, but I I think that's more challenging if if people haven't done it in a while, then they give themselves credit for with good chins actually over the bar, elbows are actually Mm -hmm. locked out at the bottom. Those are are good pull-ups. Women's six strict pull-ups, which is legit. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's that again, I think is so cool because you turn the clock back even 15 years. And that's one of those kind of mm-hmm. eye popping moments for a lot of folks was when they started seeing these CrossFit athletes come out and it was just the expectation. Yeah, women do pull ups and they do muscle ups and they do yep. all these other things that was not accepted universally in fitness circles. I mean, you are an absolute outlier as a woman if you could do a pull up. And these days, it's just expected, which I think is so cool. So, oh, one, yeah, one, very cool to see. So, I know for everybody at home, this was a bit of a unique episode. A lot of words, if you will, a lot of chatting, a lot of data, a lot of numbers. But my goal or my intention is, if you're, you know, driving or hanging out or something, you can just kind of put this on in the background, listen to the workouts, get in your head where you think you land, hear what the 50th percentile is, and over the course of all these different data points from. Mixed modality, just gymnastics work, just one rep max is kind of everything in between the fast lifts, the slow lifts, kind of kind of probably give you a good metric of are you where you thought you were? Do you need maybe there's some area that you thought you needed work in, you're actually doing better, or vice versa. And by the end of all this, I think it would ideally paint a a hopefully a useful picture for a lot of people because numbers are wonderful. They're unemotional, and that's uh it is what it is. Well, and one thing I'll add to that too is I really believe that everybody should, from time to time, put themselves in a situation where they're around "quote unquote" normies, and they go out in the world, <laughs> That's a great and word. you just have a bit of a taste of what you can actually do. And I remember very vividly a few years ago I took up um, jujitsu, and I think I've told this story in the past. And uh, you know I love jujitsu; it's a lot of fun. Obviously, it's very physical. Um, and you get all walks of life that do it. Some people that are really serious about it. Some people that are just more hobbyist, other people that are, um, competitive, you know, and, and the whole range. Um, and you've got people that have different fitness backgrounds, or this is how they're going to get fit. This is their vehicle for that. Uh, you know, everything in the middle there as well. Now I'll get to the point. I remember one of the very early sessions that I did was with uh, an instructor who was pretty old school, and he believed that there were certain physical standards that need to be met as you climbed up the ranking system, uh, which are you know the belt system hmm. in jujitsu. And he believed that to get to that second rank as uh, after beginner is that you needed at a minimum to be able to hold ten burpees in a minute for 10 minutes. So basically an EMOM of 10 burpees on the minute for 10 minutes. And I tell you, you know, walking into that as a CrossFitter, I was like, okay, well, that's not that big of a deal. I can do that as part of a warm up and not totally feel destroyed. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm good to go on that. I'm pretty confident that I can pull that off pretty much anywhere. Um, But I will say the amount of normal people that really found that to be a quite a high mountain to climb. I, I was, I won't say shocked because I don't want to disparage those people. Like, you know, they're doing what they should be. That's great. But it was eye opening that in that environment, as mm-hmm. a relatively fit CrossFitter, I'm not like top of the heap, but I'm pretty average. Um, in that environment, I had no problem where there were many other people that, uh, you know, clearly did. Right. And in that environment, I was closer to the top of the heap than I was the bottom. 
And that's not at all what I'm accustomed to when I walk into the affiliate. <laughs> that's not at all what I'm accustomed to when I get together with some of the people I'm lucky to, uh, to be able to rub shoulders with, you know, some of the more competitive athletes in the CrossFit land, uh, even just, uh, you know, CrossFit staff, they're all super fit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so all that to say, don't let your experience day to day skew you from the reality that if you're in there putting the work in, you are going to be doing better than most of the people out there. Um, and not that it's a competition, not that that matters, but it can be heartening to be confronted with the fact that like, yeah, when it matters, you've got it in the tank, even if it's not you being the best in the gym on a regular basis. So be good with that. I, on that, I couldn't have said it any better myself. So 100%. I hope everybody found this beneficial and useful. Go back and listen to this as frequently as you like. Um, and as we always say, appreciate you watching or listening, but we get a lot of the content ideas for this show from you. Ideally, it's as much, everyone listening, ideally it's as much your show as it is myself and Adrian. So we wanna know, we wanna hear from you. Post your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your topics, your concerns, whatever it happens to be. Just go to the BTWB YouTube channel, find the show, and just have at it. And we will always, we're kind of curating those for future episodes. So as always, for Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we will see you next time.